Okay, my friends. I'm going. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna make something quite easy here. Oh wait, this is getting too hot. I was preparing, so I need to just take this off the heat for the moment. Um, I don't want to make this convoluted, more convoluted than necessary. But I just want to say I'm upgrading uh, a dish that I've been making for myself for 20 years. For, you know, which is you just get some uh, ground turkey, you add fennel seeds, you stir it all up, cook it all up, you cook some Oreo Kiete, sounds like and looks like an ear, and then you um, throw that in the pan with the turkey, uh, cooked turkey, and add a little pasta water and some parmesan to get it creamy and that's a dinner done but i'd like to use oh but i forgot you use broccolini you cook the broccolini with this after the spaghetti's been cooking or the orchietti takes 10 minutes so after it's cooked for about seven or eight you throw in the broccolini known in the united states as broccoli rob so I'm just going to use the broccoli. We're doing something different and a little more elevated. We're going to toast pine nuts. Just keep your eye on that. And we're going to make a, a pesto out of the broccolini. So I know I'm, I'm taking off about two inches at the bottom. And those are going to cook in the water. And you don't really need to chop them or anything at this point but you do need a bath of cold water or ice water these have been resting in the cold bath so they're already cold but when they you're basically going to blanch them so i need to um get that going Oop. oh see the smoke okay those are done the pine nuts are done if they're brown like that on one side you don't need to brown them on the other side. Turn that off. Put it aside. We've got our toasted pine nuts. That's part of the pesto. So I could use a blender for that. I'm going to need a third of a cup of grated parmesan. And I'm going to make more because I want some on top. And I also want some. So some's for the pasta. Some's for the pesto. So there's that. So we got our handy grater. I've got, I'm using whole wheat pasta for this, just for bite. Now, for this recipe, I'm also using, oh, the sausage. Oh, wait, I forgot to tell you. Well, I mentioned it, but this should be a pound. And I only have 375 grams. A pound is 454 grams. And I'm also going to, because I'm not using just turkey ground turkey and fennel in fact it's much easier to use a uh, sausage which is already seasoned perfectly if it's italian it already has uh, fennel and it already has pepper flakes but i'm using hold on um, i'm using mild sausages and i'm this pack was 500 grams so i want to get a ratio of nearly one weight one to one the pasta is is um, not quite a pound it's not 454 grams and this was over a pound so I took out one of the sausages and I'm freezing it and this is mild so that way I can add as much spice as I want or as little as I want so the next stage okay that's off that's off we cut the ends off our broccolini we toasted our, those are smell, the aromas are lovely. And we're going to make a, uh, we're going to boil the water and we're going to blanch. When that's ready, we're going to blanch, when that's boiling, we're going to blanch the um, broccolini. And then we're going to pour, put it right back into the 
really cold water. Ice water is preferable, but I'm just using cold tap water because our tap water is nice and cold already. And then we're going to um, continue. And so it's not going to be very complicated. It's just a little more complicated than when you just make, say, orecchiette with turkey and fennel and broccolini. That's the upgrade. We're, we're turning the broccolini into a pesto. And I'm because it's a pesto, I'm not using orecchiette. I'm using whole wheat pasta for flavor. And because I know that, you know, the orecchiette really holds the meat. But now we're going to have a sauce. So a lengthy um, um, pasta like spaghetti or linguine will hold the sauce. And these we're going to cut into quarters. And you'll see what quarter inch pieces or half inch pieces. And we'll see how it goes. So I'm waiting for the water to boil, which will take a while because we're going to use the water and I've filled it up to near, just below the handles. But we're going to save the water and cook the pasta in the same water that the um, broccoli is cooking, cooked, uh, blanched in. And that's um, to save time. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, folks, the water's boiling nicely. I'm not going to salt it yet, although I could. Anyway, I'm going to throw all of my broccolini in there. And it's going to blanch for one minute. And you'll know when it's blanched because it'll become very bright and green in color. It's already bright in color. But the timer's on my phone and I'm using the phone to record. So now I'm just going to keep the cold water running because we want to put this right into an ice bath. And normally I don't bother, uh, well, I usually bother with the ice, but right now I'm not going to. Um, that looks really quite beautiful. I don't know if it's been a minute yet, so we'll just wait. But the green is in the water and we don't want all that chlorophyll to be left in the water. We want it in the green, so some of these are very big. And I didn't cut them down, so I'm just going to keep cooking. Oh, now I have my water up. That feels like, sorry, folks, that feels like it's been a minute. So let's throw it in the water to cool it down and fix the green into it. Now we're going to save this water to cook the pasta in. But first we need to make the pesto. So turn that off, move this over, and then we're gonna get our, uh, we have to do two things. First we're making the pesto, which means getting the, uh, for me it means getting the food processor out. And for the other, for another way it means for bringing your blender out. So we have the, Nicely, let's just see. let's just test it. Oh yeah, the stems are look, the stems are bendy, so you can blend that up and make a pesto. I will be chopping these a little bit before putting them in, just to help it along the way. But I think if that was a minute, perhaps a minute and a half, that's pretty firm. But you know, we're just um, you go by your stance. You want them to be green. I'm going to wipe off this water. We're going to uh, make our pesto and then we're going to chop up some sausage. I, I, I forgot to mention that normally for this I would use turkey sausage, which makes it a little bit more health smart. So heart smart, not more healthful, but I couldn't find any. So I'm using mild Italian sausage, but I do recommend using if you have a turkey sausage, finding Italian turkey sausage style, Italian style, because it has all the seasonings and you already included and you don't have to um, add all those extra spices. So that's it for now. We'll be right back. 
Okay folks, it's time to make the pesto. I have the food processor out. Not everything's fitting in the frame, I noticed. And so I'm trying to do better, but this is still hot. And I don't want to burn another wooden thing. So I'm just going to cut the broccolini into one inch pieces. To, you know, to start it, get it started. And especially with the, with the uh, stems which are full of flavor, but, you know, I blanched them, maybe I didn't blanch enough. But it doesn't matter as long as they puree. So that's the uh, goal, the ultimate goal. The first goal is to get it chopped uh, roughly with the pine nut. Where is the pine? Oh, yeah. That was a third of cup, if you remember. I use a bunch, like just the bunch that, of broccolini that you get. So I didn't really weigh it or, te or test the um, ratio. So uh, for that reason, I'm going to use an entire half a cup of Parmesan. Maybe I'll reserve some for the sauce. And I'll definitely shave some over the top. Notice we don't need garlic or fennel seeds because we already have meat that is seasoned. Okay, where's the lid? Right. So, um, first we're going to just pulse this. Oh. Oh, that's working nicely. So I did cook the, I did mash the broccolini. Wow. That's very nice. Check this tube out because we're going to now add, drizzle in a third of a cup of, of good olive oil. And I'm going to start with it in the in the uh, measuring cup because it's hard to tell how much you put in if you just do it by by sight oops i'm using my left hand that isn't that's probably here let me try to change it around so now we're going to put this on high and chisel this in until we have the sauce Yeah. I guess I have a lot of broccolini in there. So let's do some more. Oops. Now we're gonna add some we're gonna add some salt. Kind of two finger pinch. And I'm gonna add a one and a half finger pinch of pepperoncino, dried red pepper flakes. And we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna go on low. And then high. And then I'm gonna just take, remember, we're gonna add, mm, that looks nice. I just have to scratch on the sides, just a moment. Okay. I'm gonna scrape down the sides. And I'm gonna give it a taste. But I wanna, I want, you know, this might not be liquidy, but. Oh, that's nice. Remember, um, it's a better grain, right? Well, there's a there's some uh, pieces of pine nut that didn't get chopped. I didn't get the whole. I didn't get it all chopped. 
I don't know. I'll add a little more oil, but the thing is, we're going to loosen it up with pasta water, so let's not get crazy with the oil for now. I want to blitz this again at high speed. You can see the motion shows it as liquefaction. I feel like that's pretty good. Not everything has to be. Well, I'll wear, I'll whistle one more time. Not everything has to be uni uniform. But the, it's the flavor that counts, and I really enjoy that flavor. It's quite mild, milder than you would expect. Considering that uh, broccoli, uh, broccolini, broccoli rabe is considered a bitter green and the fact that I'm using red pepper flakes so that's good looks really fresh looks kind of like the basil one you might um, I mean we're mostly familiar with basil pine nuts there's like a little tang just a little and it's bright green and it's a good consistency and so now we're going to move we're going to save that and we're going to move on to cooking the uh, got my water here i gotta make room we have a pan we're going to add some oil some olive oil to that and get this out of the way I need room. And we're going to cook up. Where's my wooden oh here? We're gonna We're gonna slice up our sausages. We don't have to take them out of their case, but you could. And just, you know, make it a ground meat situation. But I'm, I'm not going to do it that way this time. I'm going to slice these into half inch pieces. I think the casings will come off. They're already coming off. And you're kind of going to have little meatballs. So we're just going to do that. I'm using a you know, large skillet, pour some olive oil in there, and then we're going to cook these for five minutes. I think, you know, I always think that it's going to be like seven minutes and it turns out it ends up being four minutes. So it's up to your oven or stove top. And that's where we're going to proceed. These are already seasoned. You can see herbs. You can, you know that everything's in there is good. Well, I know because I've eaten these before. And that's a good flavor. And... I'm going to continue. We're just going to do that. And I'm going to have them cooking when I come back to you. Okay, folks. Uh, it did only take three minutes. And I'm turning it off. That's the meat. They look like little meatballs. Probably I cut them into one inch slices. You don't want to overcook them. I'm going to move and in their service of time, why it should be quick and easy. You have to get your boiling water going. I'm going to take this off the heat. Put that back on. Turn this one off. I only have one large um, element here. So you can pour some of this grease off later. I don't know where to put it. Hold on. I want this to be out of my way. I'll pour this the excess oil off. If this was turkey, you probably wouldn't even have that amount. But, you know, to keep in the interest of time, we're going to salt this water that's 
already come to a boil like that. We could have salted it before with the broccoli, but I didn't because I added the salt to the um, I added the salt to the what do you call it? The pesto. So now I don't think I need the fan on anymore. But we do want to twist this around so that it's all cooking. And you want to take the instructions from the package and if it says seven minutes, then you're going to set your timer for six minutes and test it. Or you could test it at five minutes. But we want to continue the cooking in the pan. And we're also going to say cooking liquid from that. So that's basically the penultimate step before, you know, finishing it off. So I have to deal with this extra fat. I don't want it in my sauce. I just want a, a little bit from the meat. And like I said, turkey doesn't really have that much fat. That's why I usually use turkey for this. Okay, since this is whole wheat pasta, it takes longer. So I put it in for nine minutes. Or I let it cook till nine minutes. Let's see. Now we're going to do a taste test. Yeah, and it has a bite, and it's not totally finished, but the box said, turn down the heat to medium, the box said 10 to 12 minutes, but I find they overcook easily, so we're going to add the pasta to the pan with the Okay, well, I'm causing a, I'm making a disaster here. Hold on. Well, you could do, no. No. I'm just going to, I'm going to save a cup and a half of water. That's one cup. Okay. And drain the pasta. I don't want to burn the pasta with the meat because I'm too slow getting it out with tongs. What a waste that would have been. Okay, so put that back on and put all the pasta in like that. Stir it up with the meat. That's going to sort of deglaze the pan, which has a lot of flavor. We're going to add a little water. Remember that this was on high and now for the water and now it's on medium, but it didn't, it's not yet on medium. So now we're going to add the pesto. We'll heat it up later. I need to get, um, I need to get something. Yes, a spatula. We're going to add all this delicious flavor. It's going to become the sauce. And it's going to meld with the pasta water, which now has starch in it and also some salt. And we should be flying. Now, with all that concern about the ratio of pasta to um, broccoli or meat was unsubstantiated because I ended up having more pasta than meat when in fact the metrics said the opposite. So we put it back on. Gonna add a little more of that. And we're gonna keep mixing until the um, pesto is creamy so the water and the heat and the cheese i'm gonna add a little more cheese to this i have a left so why not right 
I will be dressing this with these later. Okay, so that's mm, that smells really good. Okay. I think you wanna toss it in the sauce. I'm sure it's cooked at this point. But look how those little sausages turned into meatballs. I like that. Okay. Sauces. Saucy. Leaves us. That leaves a space on the bottom. So. I'm going to. I keep flipping the same part. I want to flip the other part. So. I don't know. That's enough for six people. So maybe this isn't just for single folks. Anyway, it's done. We're going to take it off the heat and then we're going to put it in a, on a nice plate. And what happened so quickly? I didn't have my pasta bowl out. So basically what you want to do is twirl some up, put it in your pasta bowl like that. Uh, get the meatballs on top like that as many as you would like I realize you can't see this but I don't want it to overcook so make sure you have the sauce and the, and the meatballs you like and then get your grater out Make some more. Make it look pretty. Maybe add another two meatballs. I don't know. I'm hungry, so why not? Remember, this is whole wheat pasta, so it's hearty as well. So that's quite beautiful. Now, what do I want to do? I want to take a photo. Can you even see that? There's only so much room I have. And wipe it down. Take pride in your work. Really pretty. Really delicious. I'm not even going to add parsley or anything. Doesn't need it. Just going to take a nice photo. There we go. Easy kind of gourmet.